What's up everybody, Volin here in Pursuit of Art. I had a question a while ago from my man Angel Ganev, but I couldn't answer it because I didn't really have the context that I needed for it. His question was about playing video games. What do you think about that? Is that something useful or is that just like a distraction? What do you get from it? So I ended up playing a couple hours of Fallout 4 yesterday, accidentally. So I was planning on just starting it obviously got sucked into it. That's the thing that normally happens and that's inevitable. I remember Fang Zhu saying in one of his videos that video games are a very addictive product so he doesn't really play them. Just like with everything else, if you look for nothing you're gonna get nothing. If you don't have something that you're actively looking for as you're doing whatever it is that you're doing, you could be doing the most beneficial thing. You could be doing studies right then, you could be researching, you could be trying to become the best artist you could possibly be. If you're looking for nothing, that would not be possible. If you didn't have an outcome in mind about what your studies are gonna be about, what it is that you're pursuing long-term with each and every one of these steps that you're going for, if you're just mechanically going through them, listening to music or just being distracted by 50 other things and just putting in time just because time put in is supposed to equal gain later on, that's not going to cut it. That's not going to help you. That's not what it's about. So if you just play games in the same way, let's say, then you'll get the same result, which would be pretty much nothing. You'll get to have a couple hours sucked in there. You will have done something, but you kind of won't really be sure what you're supposed to be getting out of it. And then you'll wonder, am I doing the right thing or not? I can kind of tell you in a way when you know you're doing the right thing is when you're just getting closer to an outcome. If you don't have an outcome in mind, if you don't know what you're doing, if you're doing studies but you don't know what they're supposed to get you, if you don't know, let's say, practicing values or getting better in values, getting better from doing stuff from imagination, if you don't have that at least vague destination and your studies are leading you to there, and the reason why you need the destination is just so you could compare. What I did today is that related to that or did I just sort of not really do anything? Can you think about what you've done after it's been done? That's really kind of the thing that can give you an idea of whether that was productive or not. Do you have something that you can think about now that it's done or did you just sort of kind of just sit there and just scribble? Because look at that, you can just scribble for six hours a day. At the end, you have nothing to think about that. What did you gain from it? What did you do? What did it teach you? If you approach your practice in the same way and you just kind of sit there and just do a lot of stuff and then you're done and you have nothing that you can think about and you don't really have anything that's that you're left with then there's really nothing there you may have practiced some mechanical stuff but net gain probably not huge anyway trying to not be distracted going back on the games thing now so i played fallout 4 and i was kind of wondering like apart from just let's say looking at design or just okay, well, this isn't how, let's say, I would imagine, or I would think that it would be more realistic, or just because I don't play games very much, so when I look at something new, I'm like, oh, okay, like, this stuff isn't really perfect, because every time I want to do something, it's so I have the perfectionist thing, where, oh, this thing needs to be as best as humanly possible, and then I can, and then I can do something with it. So just looking at stuff and comparing like, oh, this stuff isn't perfect, but it's shipped. Like these people are doing things. They're not perfect. They're putting an effort though and they're trying and they're getting it out and people are enjoying. They're obviously it's Fallout 4. There's been, I don't know how many Fallout. So people are into the product and they've never been perfect, but they've always been good enough. Things like that. Another thing is I may look at design. I may look at, let's say, what things look like. I may do some of that stuff, but I wouldn't trick myself to think that that's why I'm playing. Because my looking at design is five minutes out of the three hours that I'm playing. Because if you are into the game, if you're sucked in, there's no way that you're going to be looking at a mutant's belt buckle and thinking how well designed that is when he's trying to when he's trying to put a big metal rusty pipe up your head. Anyway, moving along. I was thinking when I was playing, like, why why is it that I want to play more? Because I was I I thought I'd play for like an hour. And at the end of the hour, I was like, well, okay, maybe I'll just stay for another half an hour. Ended up with three. But I was, why is it that I want to play more? What's happening here? So at the beginning, it was very easy to abandon. First time I played the game, I just watched the cinematic and I just quit it right away. Like I, I had stuff to do and okay, that was cool. That was three minutes done. That was great. 
When I started playing though, what made me want to play more? So I thought about it and I kind of got into it. So I was, I was building something. So I had some equipment, I had some stuff that I'd found, people were giving me tasks. That's another thing. Like when you think of a game, you kind of think of it as relaxing and like you're just doing this thing that's really pleasurable. No, and people were asking me for stuff like, dude, go, go build me a bed. Like some guy wanted me to build beds for him. Uh, plant potatoes uh, over there if you can, please. And then another guy, they just, everyone just asks you for stuff. And when you think about it, you can be asked for stuff. Like that's not relaxing. You're asking me, to, I want to do what I want to do. I want to Grand Theft Auto style, just get into your car and just drive around and look for grannies with apples and throw them at their grandpa sitting right next to you. That's what I want to do. I want to just whatever. Like I just want to completely go crazy and just do whatever I want. But you're asking me to do whatever you want. But then I give you that thing, then you get me experience, then I get to gain something. Look, the quickest way for me to explain it is that people that make games are pretty much just taking what's natural for our brain to feel rewards, and they're just implementing it into a system that's very, very easy to grasp. Like, it doesn't take a lot. It's, it's very simple. It's, there's a task, there's something to be done, and then there's an immediate concrete reward there's feedback right away so one of the one of the things that you need to get into flow is that one you need concentration so obviously the game sucks you in with story colors all that all those things that are going on it sucks you in with that two is you need immediate feedback so you need as as like someone's shooting you in the butt and then oh minus 10 minus 10 hit points someone shot me in the butt oh, your butt's crippled you can't walk now you can't sit your butt's really crippled you can't watch tv that's minus 50 endurance because you can't get your rest because your tv but watching is now done. Immediate feedback. You know what's going on. You know if you're getting rewarded. It feels good to get rewarded and you get that small wins effect. So I was wondering why do I want to play this game more as they're just asking me for mundane stuff. Like build me a bet. That's not interesting. To me. I want to go and shoot some huge monster thing. That's what I want to do. Build me a bed. And then I was like this is really boring. And then I went and looked for potatoes for like three hours though. So for Two and a half hours, I was just in this dirt field looking for potatoes and carrots. And I'm like, if I'm doing this, what's wrong with me? Why does it feel good to do that? And that's the thing, it's small wins. So once I get the guy the potatoes, he gives me the experience. I'm like, oh, I leveled up now, I can get a new thing. And then he asks me for another thing and I'm like, okay, that's another small win. So a series of small wins and that thing becomes more and more addictive. I'm getting into it, I'm getting better. I'm not necessarily doing something that's incredibly exciting, it's just a small wins effect in my brain. And the more dopamine I get because of the rewards and because of the flow thing. I'm into the game. I'm not thinking about anything else around me. I'm concentrated on this thing because I have a task. I have immediate feedback. My butt's crippled. I need to fix it. And I'm getting experience. I need to just keep going with this thing. So then I thought, what's the point of doing that? Like, I'm, I can't tear myself away from it now because I'm into it. But I could easily translate that into just doing my actual work after that. So I'm, I'm just doing Learn Squared courses right now. You may have seen I'm doing a huge blog post. It's gonna be over 15,000 words probably, just eight weeks of all the big ideas from all the guys that are teaching there, big names from the industry, awesome courses. So I'm doing that and I got software from like, from this week, the guys showed me like more of their tools. Okay, so I have Fusion 360 I could play with, so there's like new software I could explore. I could go and just have a look at like Cinema 4D. I could do all, I could do, like I already have small mundane tasks that if I just partition them, so what the game does is that it just partitions it to you in a way that's structured. So it has a huge task, ultimately, like the big quest, that's your huge task. Same as you, like your art journey, that's your big task. But then it's just been partitioned for you. So if it's like as if someone's gone and just cut it up for you in pieces that you can kind of manage. Because if they just give you like, okay, go on the quest and you have nothing. You got no feedback, no map, no pip boy, no quests, no people talk, nothing. Like I'm, st I'm in the vault. There's a huge frog in front of me licking my face with radiation and I'm dying. That's kind of like what a real world scenario would be like you probably wouldn't even make it out the vault the game just gives you enough so that you know you can succeed it breaks it up for you and you just have to go through these steps so same thing here i could literally just take those three hours and just say 
I'm gonna go through the Fusion 360 interface. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have to create something. I'm not gonna make this amazing design. I'm not gonna entangle in there all the things that I may be working on that I'm not really good at that are gonna plummet my dopamine level. I'm gonna get my dopamine level high. I'm gonna be in there just for small wins. I'm gonna do little tasks that are monotonous and boring. I'm gonna get a reward for each and every one by just saying like, yes, I can use this later. This is gonna be awesome. I can put this here, I can put this there. That is enough. And if you think of yourself that each and every practice that you do is a level up, and if you have some sort of number that you can assign to everything you do, I used to track hours. Now I give myself percent good day. So if I have like a day where it's kind of crappy, then 60%, dude, you didn't really try hard. If I get 90%, dude, that's good, you did 90. I don't really have rewards that I've implemented. If I do want a new computer at some point, I'll probably try and work that in somehow. Like get like 50, 90% days, you get yourself a new processor or a new whatever. My point being is that games exploit things in your brain. That's why they're addictive. That's why they're there. And that's why everyone enjoys them so much is because all of those things that suck in real life that are hard, those things are taken, compressed, dissected and fed back to you. Guy asked me to build him beds and to go look for potatoes. If your granny comes to you now, this is a real world scenario. Can you go and build me and your grandfather a bed and plant potatoes? That would be the worst day in your life. I use that as a break from everything else that I had to do. That was like relaxing to me. Uh, uh, I get to search for this guy's potatoes. So there's something that the game does and it's just that small wins. You get to have small things that you're gonna go for. It gives you the small win effect. It gives you the flow thing where it's rewarding you. It's re don't be nasty to yourself really is the takeaway. Like don't be like, ah, oh, I didn't do a good drawing. Instead just say, dude, you tried hard and you practiced today, that's plus one. Give yourself the, the game never penalizes you. The game does not take your experience away. You may die, you just reload. No, no penalty. The game does not penalize. It doesn't like Diablo when your guy dies forever, and, but then you never play again. Or you just leave it for six months and then you come back and avenge yourself and get an even bigger Amazon lady that kills everyone. A couple more games and I'm just leaving it. Again, it all depends on what it is you're looking for. You can implement those things. You can make those mundane things you have to do in real life. You can make those addictive in the same way. You can benefit from games in real life. You can gamify your life. That's the big takeaway. For me, another thing though, is that it really allows me to look at my strategies. When I was a kid, I used to play games and always get my ass kicked on a lot of them. And I would think that I'm doing different things, but I really wasn't. Like I would try something that I would think is a different strategy, but it really wasn't too much different to what I'm doing. Like I may go right instead of left, but I wouldn't consider just not leaving the room or going backwards or just whatever it may. I wouldn't take an approach that's drastically different. And I wouldn't think about my thinking. When I play games now, that's the good part of it about games. It, and I don't play often. I might play like once a month or once every couple of months. Like I might just, I just want to do something different every once in a while, but I don't do it as, if you do it too often, it, it doesn't really, you can't think about it very much. It's just something you participate in. Only when it's a new experience, can you kind of, you know, think about your thinking as you're doing it, your meta thinking. So when I was playing, one is I'm going to say about first person shooters and stuff like that is that you can actually use those to get comfortable in stressful situations. I got my girlfriend to play serious Sam ones and she only played for like five minutes, but she got chased by one of those um, skeleton horse things, ones that like just jump on you and spike you and stuff. And she was after five minutes, she was <laughs> It's like she just wrestled with a bear. I couldn't keep her. Like I'm, I'm just saying to her, look, it's just a game. Like just get used to the buttons. It's gonna speed you up. It's gonna like allow you to be more flexible. It's gonna train like your stress tolerance. But she was just, please, just let me go. I want to get out of here, please. This is not fun. She just wanted to go in her corner, you know, and do her dolls thing or whatever it is that girls do. She didn't like that. But then I played a game. I played Painkiller, and I played games from 50 years ago that because I like playing for five or 10 minutes and just leaving it forever. So then I played that and I was like really low on health and there were like witches and vampire bats chasing me and trying to hit, I, like I was gonna die. And the moment that I was gonna die, my accuracy plummeted, everything just got really bad. 
and then I would try like I can I try and use those things to when I see something in myself like oh I'm reacting poorly or like I could do better here or like my reaction is slow I, I could try let's say I'll use a, a slow gun to try and kill something that's really fast so I'll get like the spike thing from painkiller like the steak shooter and I'd get like something that's flying around or really really fast and I'll try to shoot that with the slow gun I'm trying to practice my accuracy where's this guy gonna be how can I best get him? Also, you need to like stay cool under pressure. Like this thing is like 50,000 pygmy zombie things are just hitting you with tiny sticks and you, I, I'm dying. Like I need to really do this, but at the same time, it has to be slow. So you kind of learn to control yourself. It, it forces you to think about your thinking. Anytime you try to implement a strategy that's not intuitive, it forces you to think about your thinking. So again, it's just trying to find ways to make something, you can make the worst thing be productive. It doesn't matter. I used to be a cleaner before. When I used to go clean, I would just listen to audiobooks and I would listen to stuff that I wouldn't listen to at home because I wouldn't have time for it. I would listen to like Carl Sagan and I would listen to like stuff about the universe and blah. I might be cleaning a toilet or I might be polishing some rail. I'm learning about the universe at that same time. A lot of other people that were there, they were just polishing the thing or brushing the toilet. That's what they thought they were doing. But while I was doing that, I was doing something else too. It really doesn't matter what you do necessarily. It matters how you think about it and what you look for. To be able to get something out of something, you need to look for something. Final point. When I played Heroes of Might and Magic once, and I'm giving you these because like, to me, they're pretty big insights. Like I wasn't aware of these things I didn't know that I get stressed. Like I thought, oh, it's just a game. No way is that gonna affect me in any way. But when I got chased by the little zombie pygmy, it's like, eh, eh. and I like I, I needed like that's something I can work on through that. So I can improve my stress tolerance through doing stuff like that. I can just improve my calm under pressure. When I was playing Heroes of Might and Magic, I can't remember which one, Heroes of Might and Magic. And um, I always have I found that I have this tendency of like, okay, I'm making this one hero guy and I'm making him really, really powerful. I'm giving him like all the troops and I'm giving him all the experience and he's fighting everything and getting all the artifacts and all that stuff. So if you haven't played the game, essentially it's just that I'm making one guy that's really, really strong, but you can have like many guys. You can move like many other heroes around. They can all explore and they can take stuff, but if they get like attacked by something, they're gonna die if they're really weak. And the one that's really strong, he gets all the experience, so I make him even stronger and he can just crush anything. And I, I, was, I was doing that again, that's how I used to play before. And this is the first time I played it after like five or 10 years, let's say. So I started playing, started making this really powerful guy, sent him out to get all the stuff. And then I started getting attacked by all kinds of like weak guys coming from all over the place, like the other players, just really, but they had their main guy, but they also had like 10 other weak guys and they would just be attacking me and just hassling me and I'd have to get my strong guy and okay, strong guy, go and get rid of that weak guy there and another weak, and he couldn't concentrate on getting stronger. He couldn't get the more powerful stuff because he had to deal with lesser stuff. So I was thinking of that and I was thinking to myself, like that's how I kind of live my life. I try to make myself like really, really powerful so I try and like learn all the software, all the techniques, all the whatever. I watch thousands of hours of videos, of lectures, of blah, blah, blah. I've taken every course out there, I've spent all my money on all that stuff. That's what I invested constantly. So I'm trying to get this like really powerful guy. But at the same time, I could instead of just that one guy, I could have another 10 guys that are less powerful that are just exploring and taking all the other stuff, all the lesser stuff. This guy can just focus on what's really important. Other guys can do other stuff. It's just, it's not natural for me. Like for me, it's more natural to just have one guy and he deals with everything. But just playing the game, I'm like, well, there's other approaches to this. I could, I could use that in a different way. I could split a little bit. I could sacrifice a little bit of that guy's strength, but he could ultimately get stronger because he can go and he can collect all the more powerful stuff in exchange for some troops or whatever. I'm just trying to make the point here that these things can, it's not games, it's just really any new, any experience that you do, any, any kind of activity that you do that has its own rules. If you apply your thinking to your thinking, if you apply your meta thinking, if you analyze your thinking, you can gain insights into what you do. 
Another one is that when I play Diablo or a game like that, I would always save my most powerful potions. I wouldn't drink those. Like even if I got killed, I just, I didn't drink them because they're like hard to get or like, I would have all the stuff that's easy to buy or if I just get it for free, I would use it. But I wouldn't use stuff that's like hard to get. Like stuff that's perishable, that's one thing. Again, so the real life, real life equivalent is I would gather, let's say, money. So I wouldn't spend stuff. Like it's only this year I started spending tons on looking people up and like getting their... But in the last few years, because I live in a foreign country and there's... I work part-time, there's not a lot of money and there's a lot of debt and there's other stuff that I need to pay for. So I would like conserve my resources as much as possible. I'm like, oh, I can't do this now. I can't do it now. I need to wait till later. I can't, same thing when I play Diablo, I can't use this potion now. I can save it for when it's the perfect time, which you can go through the whole game and still not have like the perfect, I'm going to hold on to this because it's important and I don't have too much of it. So I have this scarcity thing going on. So I played the game and I'm like, oh, dude, you're not using your, your stuff. Like I could use that now. So then I start using it up. And then in real life equivalent, I can start and, okay, let's take this course. Like, I don't care if I don't have it right now. Let's just take it anyway. Let's see what happens. Like, did that hurt me like long-term? No, I, I, I don't even notice that I spent it. Well, let's take this one too. Okay, that's fine. Let's so I've spent more this year than I've ever spent before and it's the year that I'm supposed to have the least amount of money because it's the longest now that I've been doing this thing and I've been in hermit mode just working as much as I can and then not really focused on money but focusing on skill and doing all that stuff anyway this was supposed to be about a 10 minute video but I'm hoping that I could give you you know a couple different things to think about it doesn't matter if it's games it doesn't matter what it is it could be the most productive thing that you can do in the most unproductive way, or it could be the most unproductive thing that you can get something from. So it's not the activity, it's what you look for. It's all about what you choose to focus on. It's about whether you're, you know, really interested in investigating something. Or if you're just doing something because either socially that's just what's decided that that's good, or you just, I don't know, maybe you just don't see other options at the moment. So. Really, that's it. It all comes down to you, as always. It's always up to what it is that you're looking for. And you can always make systems to make what it is you do more fun. And it's not, a, it's not an external thing. It's not like I need to play it. Like games are fun and studying is hard and boring. It's not that. Is it like those are immediate associations. Games are just as boring. Is that they just have built in them a system that makes it fun for you. So you can apply those same things and just make a system for what you do and gamify what it is that you do. Don't be an asshole to yourself because first rule of games is don't punish the player. Reward all the time. Small wins until you get to the point where you've invested so much into this thing that not only are you going to build the guy his beds and give him his potatoes, you're going to then want to build him a nice house and make him a car and whatever else you can. It wouldn't matter to you. You're invested into it because you've spent time on it. Spend time on your craft. Small win your way to the point where you're just constantly on the up and up. And then keep pushing for new stuff. And make sure to reward yourself. Don't be, don't be an asshole. Because no game would just punish you and you'd want to play more. I think Dead Souls or something is one of the games that tried to do that. I never played it for more than about 10 minutes, but I don't really play games very much. Anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful and useful. And if not, at least I hope that maybe you'll play games differently from now on. Goodbye.